going to, uh, if I could take a stab at it, is on live, in the past, I mean, it's a little bit different with some of the changes that have been implemented now with the corruption vendor, but in the past, it was really difficult to get the corruptions that you actually wanted. So, and one of those corruptions we've been talking about is, you know, percent versatility, increasing your versatility, that paired with conflict and strife is really strong into, you know, what Waz likes to play, which is that assassination rogue. So on TR, teams going, you know, horde to be orcs, stacking versatility, playing conflict and strife, it makes it really difficult to play rogue mage uh, against a lot of these teams. And I, I think that might be one of the frustrating things for him and would certainly be different uh, on the tournament realm than on live. Yeah, it's very weird to think about with live too. Something's getting a huge power spike earlier. Uh, I mean, if you haven't really been paying attention to what went on, uh, has been going on in the game, corruptions get added. Now there's actually a vendor so you can control your fate a little bit, actually get those corruptions, uh, be able to grab them with the Echoes of Nihilotha, which have increased their drop uh, per rate, I guess, by 5% for every source, or sorry, X5, uh, for everything that did drop them. But the thing is, is like Warlocks get their preferred corruptions on the first week. It changes today on NA, it changes on EU, I think tomorrow, I believe is how it works. Uh, so you see Warlocks kind of pulling ahead. Everybody has access to all of the corruptions and that was how that meta was solidified. So a little bit of a change. Waz uh, has described it as an XD, but let's see what we actually get in this blind pick on the Grand Arena. Method Black against Enigma. The gates are about to open. Right, Windwalker, Destruction Warlock. Mistweaver. This is pretty much what you would say is the meta right now with the boys in NA winning all of the Method Mayhem tournaments almost almost exclusively with it. A couple substitutions in with that warrior with Smexen, but this composition is definitely deadly. Raikou and Waz moving in, trying to find a polymorph or a sap spike target. Sap spike target appears to be Rezus. They need to keep him locked in these purple circles as long as possible. They decide to just go for the kidney shot and try and all in anyway. Rezus immediately trinkets and touch of karmas during that combustion and manages to stay alive. However, now he's open to being smoke bomb vendetta in the near future. I can imagine that Method Black are keeping that option open. Now they want to pull Rezus as far away from Tiki as possible to execute on it. Hmm, this is very interesting. I think they... Uh, this Waz still has blind is. as well, so they do have the blind. Kidney shot, smoke bomb, trying to bait some cooldowns, but I think the next time Rezus is going to be in real danger is going to be when they do a blind sap setup on Rezus um, with the spike trinkets. So I think that's likely what we're going to be seeing from Method Black as they look to set that up. All of these goes <laughs> are just trying to keep them on their back foot for now. Waz is going to be taking a little bit of damage. The Vendetta is... Uh, rolling, but it really didn't get too much from it. Rezus is going to be completely fine with no crowd control on Tiki. He's going to be able to sit back. And Fernion, Rezus, they're going to be forcing Chaz and Waz to retreat at this point in the game. I like how you say real danger. Rezus just got stunned at Smoke Bomb with Vendetta and no trinket. <laughs> it wasn't real danger. No, it wasn't. You need spite <laughs> trinkets for the real danger. Oh, there it is. Blind with no way out of blind. They have to stop Sap. So they need to keep Waz away from Rezus, but they can't. He shadow steps in and lands the sap. Rezus is this going is to real be danger. so overly corrupted. You think he's fine. He's at full health right now, but all of that health is going to quickly dissipate as his corruption is going to be maxed out. Double mortal coil to try and stall, but things from beyond are already chasing Rezus. He cleanses it, but Tiki's in a full polymorph. He activates diffuse magic and karma. Potentially Raikou just blocks it off for an all in. Doesn't want to commit just yet. Karma is keeping Rezus alive for now, and he manages to survive that overly corrupted window, which in and itself is a miracle, with decent counter pressure, getting Raikou's cauterized off the back of it. Ah, but Rezus is still low! Big heals incoming from Tiki to keep him alive. He has no defensive cooldowns, manages to get behind the pillar. What a dangerous moment. I think he went down to like 3% health there. Really, really scary. Blinding light now onto Tiki. I think they have a little bit more crowd control. Can Raikou find the polymorph? Unfortunately not, but the sap lands. Now Rezus could be in some trouble. He does get polymorphed. Not sure what Method Black is trying to do right now. I think they're just trying to survive. Infernion with his Dark Soul going to be able to get out a lot of damage. And Raikou, of course, without his Cauterize, is going to be feeling really scared in this situation. All right, Infernion trying to develop some Soul Shards here and get into the fight after that Frost Nova, but they avoided his Dark Soul quite effectively. 
Raikou is still the primary target. Inferni on Polymorph. Tiki moving in line of sight, but not dispelling. Potentially holding on to it to dispel an Obsidian Claw. Valuing that dispel over the Polymorph. Now deciding to go for the half-diminishing return one. We see both healers on top of each other. Tiki likely wants to engage with a Paralyze into a Leg Sweep, but he needs to be careful of Hammer of Justice. And Chaz is going to reposition away. Waz Shadow steps over. Looks like he's in stealth at the moment. Chaz gets Ring of Peace out into midfield for a Fear. Beautiful setup into a Leg Sweep. Two Chaos Bolts into Raikou. He's going to Temporal Shield and heal those two Chaos Bolts. Well timed. Infernion trying to Nether Ward some incoming crowd control. Tiki fully blinded. Gladiator spikes uh -oh. have been launched. They need Ride the Wind. They need to get Rezus to get Ride the Wind down as soon as possible. He gets Cheap Shot shot on his ride the wind oh, no. that was beautiful by was totally denying the freedom effect it's and over. tiki it's is over. absolutely being devastated that cheap shot from was absolutely owned enigma in game one that, that was game winning that that was the difference between winning and losing the game that double cheap shot coming in from was absolutely beautiful like you said and that is why method black is up one and out right now yeah, I mean, in the last series, it, it was a, a little bit of a Cinderella story, but this time we are just going to see that idea slapped right out of the, the minds of the team that is the underdog in this one. We are going to see Method Black have a very strong statement to start off this series. Let's talk about the blind picks, Eco. Uh, why were they able to pull down this early win? Well, they play, you know, solid composition aggressively with their Rogue Mage Pally. And it's all about the spite setups. You know, they get the setups onto Rezus, they try to force his trinket, then they force out the monk's trinket, and they basically, whichever one of the monks doesn't have his trinket, that's the guy you're gonna blind, and that's the guy you're gonna try to set up on. And you guys already, uh, you know, kind of highlighted it at the end there, but Waz, with that cheap shot in the middle of that ride the wind, uh, again, that is the reason why he died. But more importantly, I think we should also explain that. So like, you can see they're going for the for the blind. They get the sap after and Rezus. If he can get the ride the wind inside, the the player that's in the spite will basically be treated as if he's you know not standing in a spite, uh, and his stacks will start going down. But since Waz did that, and then Raikou also did the, the dragon's breath after that, he gave them the time that they needed to stop Rezus from stopping the setup and. That's, that's the thing about Method Black. These guys are scary on the Rogue Mage. Mm -hmm. They're always playing one step ahead, and this is how they do it. Yeah, I, I mean, it puts them in uh, such a crazy position. Let's talk about what we expect to see, though, as we do move forward in this series. Is this going to be another one, Ben, where we have the potential for counter comp play? Or do you think we've gotten a pretty good idea of what the future games are going to look like in this best of five? Well, I don't think the compositions that Enigma are running right now, like, I, I don't think that's a matchup where they just lose, you know? I think it can definitely go either way. Um, if Ride the Wind had been down, that matchup could have been looking completely different. I mean, they were getting a lot of defensive cooldowns from Method Black, and, and this is a matchup they can easily win. So this might be one of those series where both teams just stick with one composition from start to finish, try to just get little advantages uh, depending on what map it is. I'm not convinced that Monk Demon Hunter would really be better into Rogue Mage Paladin. Uh, I think these spite setups are just so scary from Method Black, and it seems to be like the main win condition from Rogue Mage teams right now. It's like the uh, only so, thing that yeah. can kind of push through the percent versatility, it feels like. Yeah, Super Tease, what do you expect to see as you move forward in the series? I don't think Method Black are going to change until they have to. Enigma picked Alloran Sewer, so it makes me think they're going to try Windwalker Demon Hunter, which could get a lot more pressure on the mage than the Destruction Warlock. Um, they just need to make sure, like you said, they get the Ride the Wind down. So Rezus almost got baited because Waz cheap shot him before it. He was trying to pre cheap shot, so Rezus is like, oh, I can get in now. I got cheap shot. And then Waz cheap shot him a second time. So that was really clutch. If Rezus was able to get there, like, like we're saying, the corruption stacks are almost immediately cleansed, and then you're not taking that increased damage, you survive a sunlock, your safeguard procs, you top yourself off and you're fine. So definitely it's a very important that they keep Rezus on the Windwalker, and it's really just a matter of if they want to switch Infernion out for Fuston. Uh, Demon Hunter Windwalker, I think, would be solid. And then if they want on the larger maps to run the Warlock, they could. Uh, but we're waiting to see, and yeah, Method Black aren't going to make any changes. Yep, they're not going to make any changes. We're going to Dollar and Sewer. So now, Zico, what do you expect to see from Enigma? Well, the map kind of tells me that they want to run something cleavy, but 
I feel like they should run the Windwalker lock. I think if they lock in like Windwalker Demon Hunter, I think it's a big mistake. I, I could see that Demon Hunter getting 100 owed, uh, and also the Windwalker can get 100 owed. So you have basically two squishy targets there. Um, but I, I think we're just going to see the Destro lock more of the same. Um, play to your win condition, try to stop the spite setups, and uh, if you can do that, you'll win. But it's pretty hard to do. <laughs> Warlock. Oh, new Druid. A Druid. What? Yeah, Druid Healer. <laughs> I'm not sure about this one, <laughs> to be honest. I'm, I, I'm, I, I don't like this. Houston one. Druid. I definitely... Houston Druid. What? That can't <laughs> be right, I don't think. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what the Druid really offers here, compared to the Mistweaver Monk. Um, especially against Rogue Mage Paladin. I mean, yeah, Kleptomania. So here's one of the things about uh, Mage right now, if you don't know. Mage has an ability called Spell Steal, where you can basically take a beneficial buff away from the opposing team. So, I mean, you can steal powerful spells like Blessing of Protection, uh, not so powerful spells like Rejuvenation, but you can play an Honor Talent called Kleptomania, and with that Honor Talent, you can remove every single beneficial spell. So, if you get Crowd Control on the Druid and you use Kleptomania to remove all of the heal over time effects that they have available, it's basically like a, a bit of a soft counter coming in from the Mage against the Druid and i just i don't know i don't really know what enigma is thinking with this pick to be honest i mean ho hopefully they can prove me wrong but i think this is going to be really scary for them they are primed to get kleptified in the sewers let's see if meta black <laughs> is going to be able to put themselves on match point or if enigma has some crazy idea up their sleeves that our analysts were not able to see beforehand because this one's looking kind of sketchy all right here we go game number two Restoration Druid again going to try and make a show. Looney did almost win. I think he probably would have on a different map, but on Dalaran Sewers, I mean, Tiki, what does he think of it? Does he think Druid's going to survive a stun lock better than a Mistweaver? I've, maybe before. Maybe before, but nowadays, I think, I almost think no the way. Rogue Mage Paladin could just run at Tiki. Yeah. And just kill uh, them out, I don't right? know if they're going to be able to run at Tiki, but I just think they can do really good spite setups on basically anyone they want. And, I mean, Iron Bark is a really good cooldown, but it's not Life Cocoon, that's for sure. So, yes. I think uh, the defensive uh, capabilities of Enigma with this matchup is going to be a, a, maybe worse. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely have to wait and see. There's a reason why they decided to go with the Restoration Druid, and we'll have to see uh, if they had the right thought process, or if Method Black is going to be walking away with game number two as well. All right, they're trying to hold out and get a sap, but I believe that they've managed to get into combat. Rezus is trading it with his Dispel onto Infernion, and now Waz is maybe just going to have to open or hope he gets lucky and finds Tiki. Raikou is out of style. Tiki comes out of style, but he's in combat now as well. He drops Efflorescence on himself, so I'm expecting that Tiki thinks he's going to be the target. He gets cheap shot into Polymorph. Raikou double blinks for it. Infernion gets Sunlock. Infernion trinkets out and goes for some big counter pressure. Unfortunately, that Polymorph didn't oh, last the full duration, okay. and now this damage is quite insane onto Raikou and Waz. Seemingly out of nowhere, Infernion looking to strike back in game two. Double Shadow Fury. Chaz recovering with the Avenging Wrath, but with Avenging Wrath, you normally expect the whole team to be at full health. They certainly aren't at the moment. Chaz manages to pull them back up from the brink. Infernion with no trinket is susceptible now to that blind spite all in. And if they can prevent Rezus from dropping Ride the Wind, he could easily be erased. I'm really curious what broke the initial polymorph on Tiki. I mean, that was that's the reason why we're seeing Enigma have all this pressure. They committed a lot. I mean, double shimmer. Um, Awaz committed his stuns as well in order to get that crowd control. Now, big attempt on Rezus. He's in trouble. He got cheap shot on uh, his trinket, <laughs> and he's just going to be taken down. I mean, where is this damage coming from? I'm really curious if Rezus is playing versatility or gushing wounds, to be honest with you. You would not expect... Uh, an orc windwalker monk with versatility to die in a situation like that uh but uh i mean method black they're going to pick up a quick win in game number two 
uh, a bit surprising, to be honest. Yeah, I, I mean, the way that it's getting done as well, right? I, I mean, beforehand, you, you know, you start believing in the underdogs after we watched this previous series, but now it looks like we have two teams in a completely different class. Zico, is that what you're seeing here? Or is there something else going on? Because, I, I mean, dude, it, all the way when, when the Druid first got locked in, right? I, I, we started asking questions, but let's actually talk about what's going on here. So, uh, Tiki's main is actually the Druid. I thought it was a monk, to be honest, because he's so good yeah. at it. But his main is the Druid, so I guess it's a little bit of comfort. And also, it kind of removes that wing condition on, you know, the monk healer. The, I think the problem is that the throughput of Druids compared to a monk is not that great. And also, I mean, this is this is uh, just a high level play from Waz as well. Getting a value smoke bomb is pretty difficult, especially on a small map. But getting a value smoke bomb where you force trinket and then you restun the trinket and you kill the guy, uh, I mean, that's 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 just a Waz bomb. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, hey, we're in a situation here as well that we might get our first 3-0 of the day, and uh, it, I don't think that it's that surprising, Sid, that it might be Method Black who's actually able to do that. See, this is why, like. In game one, we saw a smoke bomb vendetta with no trinket. Nothing happened. Health didn't move. That time it was just smoke bomb. It was smoke bomb combustion. So smoke bomb combustion is scary. Vendetta is no longer scary. I think is what is what I'm learning. It, it's still pretty scary. You know, you know what's also really effective? I, I just watched the last few moments of that game. Another thing that's mm -hmm. really effective against restoration druids is maledict. And what they did was they actually preemptively launched a maledict on the dispel, and then that maledict is what actually set them up. Uh, to get that smoke bomb kill because it reduces all the I mean they don't even need to spell steal the healing over time effects if it's just not doing anything all that healing is getting absorbed by that trinket so really nice heads up play there by method black uh, yeah. yeah that's that's just one of those good things that we kind of wanted to see more people playing maledict into Destrolox into you know a lot of these hybrids like ferals like windwalker and uh, you know abusing the fact that druids only have an 8 second dispel and I mean we saw it uh, there again the big plays there cheap shot cheap shot the trinket the maledict absorbing up everything and they barely had enough damage there to kill him but that's a that's a good uh it's a good call well i i want to talk a little bit more about whether or not we're going to see the druid i mean you know you talk about comfort comfort makes a lot of sense but uh sometimes you got a job to do which you, you can't rely on comfort right uh like I, i'm really comfortable in sweatpants every now and then you gotta wear a suit right uh it's just not going to get the job done here do you think that we are going to see that druid though i don't think the druid was well yeah i guess <laughs> I, I feel like if, if, if he did have a monk there the monk can just revive all him <laughs> can do a lot of things uh, to keep him alive so yeah maybe the, the, it's always the problem though right if you do lock in the monk the monk is a target as well for those spite setups so it's kind of like uh it's it, you kind of have to pick your poison there okay well method black uh they, they only need to pick exactly what they want to pick right they're not going to have to change anything at all they're going to be headed to blades edge arena now it's all on enigma here to see if they can manage to stay in this one just a little bit longer i'm very curious to see if they can pull off a victory here the Restoration Druid really didn't get a chance to flourish. The game ended far to too quickly. <laughs> no, no didn't one get a chance to nourish. <laughs> no, flourish. Flourish. Like, because if you grow. Because he, he didn't have a chance flourish. to flourish because he didn't have a chance to grow. The yeah, but they have too nourish, fast. too. Isn't that a spell? But they have nourish. It's a if druid. It's nourish doesn't yeah. make sense within the sentence. It's not a, it's not you a don't pun. Make it's sense. not a pun. The flourish was it's a pun. Not, yeah. You don't That's make sense. I'm with Ven. I don't make sense. It's not because it's a birthday. Ven, Ven basically, it's Ven's birthday, so he's right. I'm right. Yeah. Birthday crowned flaunted. I remember this one. It's my birthday. Uh, I was reading chat too, and uh, they mentioned it might have been the dispel. Is it, does, does the mushroom of efflorescence have a dispel effect? Can you like talent into that? See, I didn't think that it worked unless it was changed without like without an announcement because effects that remove a slow one time, so like tiger's lust, that doesn't work, right? No, for the polymorph at the beginning of the game, you can't dispel. It only dispels slows and roots. Okay, that's good to know. It's not magic. And I but saw a fell like, hunter like running rain. around. I saw a fell hunter running around. So I don't. I don't and know why. The, the mage more, wasn't like you know that power blast Azure trait where like the target in between gets hit. Dude, by no somebody? one has ever run that trait. No yeah, exactly. But I'm trying to like that's run. I'm running awful. the numbers no on like what could have broke. That trait. I'm trying to run the numbers on like what could have broke that. But even that wouldn't have made sense because Raikou wasn't in a place where it would have passed through the druid. Uh, maybe infinite star. 
If someone has it. I don't know. Something happened. Infinite I was getting Star. you know what? I was getting healing rain. Yeah, Infinite Star broke some poly people. I was getting uh, healing rain mixed up with uh, efflorescence. So healing rain actually has like a you drop it and then it randomly has a chance to dispel magic. Uh, but I don't druids definitely don't have that. Do, do you think anyone would run infinite stars though? Mm. No, that's why I was saying yeah, it couldn't I couldn't mean, have been. I was like infinite stars yeah. like <laughs> yeah, no one's running I, that. I feel like that would be it, that that would be a, a pretty big surprise uh, if we did end up seeing that. I, that that was not on our list of exciting surprises either. I would just be a uh, big confused. <laughs> but now I just did see that it has popped. We are going to see the Druid yet again. It's time to go to Blade's Edge Arena. This one is going to potentially send Enigma down to the lower side of the bracket. And we already know that the lower bracket is a scary place to be right now. Not only are you going to face elimination, but we already have some of the top dogs waiting there in teams like Wildcard Gaming. Will Method, Method Black be able to end this series here? I mean, it's looking, it's not looking bad for them, that's for sure. I mean, the games are looking really, really nice. Uh, Waz had a really insane play that set up that, that last kill onto Rezus. Um, but I just think the Rogue Mage Paladin into this composition against the Restoration Druid uh, if I had to bet, I feel like just compositionally, Method Black definitely has the edge here, and I mean, it seems like they're playing absolutely insane as well. So, I, my prediction now is that it's going to be a, a quick 3 0 here for Method Black. So, Tiki is running the Disentanglement on her talent, so Efflorescence removes all snares when it heals, but you would know from Tiger's Lust, right? So, if you Tiger's Lust in spite, it doesn't remove spite, right? Uh, no, it doesn't. So it works like Tiger's Lust. Maybe maybe Tiger's Lust does actually remove one stack? It immediately gets reapplied, yeah. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh uh, no, uh, sapped in cat form. Oh, you don't want to be sapped in cat form. He's standing in the purple circles. He trinkets down. into he a trinket. reset. It's, it's dead. dead. It's over. dead, Goodbye. I think. There's no way. They just the press every over. button. Just press every button. He's dead. How are you going to make it out alive? Hammer of Justice nailed in here. You can't get sapped in cat. You're, it's, it's over. We the game is over if you're sapped in cat. talking about the last game, and they're already dead. I told They're you already dead. <laughs> oh, no. That is, that is a tough way to battle.